We've been doing distance education, online education for 20 years, actually. So it's, um, it's interesting to think about the fact that we're now doing an institutional readiness tool. But we've, um, we have 17 campuses at our college and our online offerings, we have like 17, 18 fully online programs now. And we've had those for a number of years. So we've seen a, almost 60% growth in our online student population in the last five years. So that's a significant amount of growth. So it's caused some challenges for us to be able to support that level of growth with, um, in such a short period of time. So when we, and we do want to uh, capitalize on that growth and we want to see it continue. So if we are averaging about 10% growth a year, how do we support the students? And we've been finding that we've, because we haven't invested, you know, the same 60% res extra resources, how do we continue to support and help the center grow? So when we were, when we asked ourselves that question, where is it that we need to invest in, you know, in our institution to ensure that the students have equitable level of services, that the students are supported, that the faculty are supported, uh, you know, how do we maintain our quality? Because we don't want to grow to the point where we can't manage things anymore. So we discovered the institutional readiness tool through SUNY and um, our college hired an external consultant to give us some little bit of an arm's length perspective on things because when you're in the middle of it you kind of have your own biases and uh, she worked with us at the college to uh, over the last six months to actually bring in and use the tool so we surveyed close to 100 executive uh, administration staff faculty using the tool a little bit of a different process than SUNY uses because I know you're looking at specific institutions um, but we looked at, uh, we used the tool online through a video conferencing because we have 17 campuses and we want a representation and we have uh, faculty teaching online and um, students everywhere. So we used the tool, she as an online survey and then she met with them by video conference and walked them through the tool and had discussions and we added extra, you know, room for uh, more open-ended questions. So using that process, we were able to get fantastic feedback using the structure of the SUNY readiness tool. What we really liked about the tool was that it covers a whole range of um, areas institution-wide, you know, financial, student services, um, quality, all of those things that you might um, not necessarily think about, you know, programs that support uh, a strong online delivery. So, and we just finished it up last week. We the survey report has been done, presented to our board. And from that, we've created an action plan to improve on areas that we need to improve on, you know, if they're developing or if they've been accomplished. And uh, so we look forward to implementing those over the next probably two years with our steering committee that we're going to form and to strengthen and then be able to grow our online school. Some areas we clearly need to obtain more resources. Now, doesn't that mean hire people or does that mean repurpose, you know, positions? So, I mean, we will be looking at how we do that efficiently. We, it's not likely we're going to get a check for a whole lot of money to be able to, you know, ramp it up to what you need. So, I mean, and there's areas with our other colleges, our other campuses, how can they support us in their schools? So there will be some of that. So we will be forming a steering committee to help us guide us through that process. And it will take some time over, you know, like I said, over the next year or two to, um, I mean, our first priority will be on though, how do we repurpose what, you know, what we currently have and how do we make services more efficient? Uh, we're looking at more lean management processes in terms of how we do things. Is there more efficiencies that we can achieve to be able to provide more support? We decided that we wanted to do the Open SUNY Institutional Readiness Assessment process um, a couple of years ago. And um, so we applied you know, to set up to do that. And kind of coincidentally, at the same time, the administration got into high gear about doing a new strategic planning process. And so the two processes ran kind of in parallel. Um, again, kind of uh, coincidentally, they just started at the same time. Um, but they also obviously needed to interact. I wanted to make sure that the results of the institutional readiness assessment would be incorporated into the strategic plan as much as possible. So because of time pressures and energy and you know, personal resources, uh, we really couldn't do the entire uh, written document in the time frame that made sense. So instead, 
I went through the, uh, all the items and I kind of drew together the main, sort of the main themes that were coming out. There were about seven or eight different issues that seemed to inform or to come out of a, n a number of the items. Um, things like uh, distance learning leadership, um, because I'm actually part-time, as you can tell. I mean, I have the two titles. So one of the issues is my ability to focus on distance learning issues with, against the other responsibilities I have. Um, that was a major one. Um, there are other items that uh, similar that seemed to be important across a number of items or either the root of a problem that seemed to manifest across a number of items or be a solution to a problem. And so I saw that there were these common th threads across the, the different items. And so I just drew up quickly a short document um, with each, each of the major themes that I thought needed to be captured and conveyed to the strategic planning process. And so I brought this document to that group and um, got, got these ideas or these issues um, integrated into the strategic plan in different ways. And again, tried to keep a mapping um, of where these issues were now informing the policies that we were putting into the strategic plan. What I see at this point, the institutional readiness assessment document or the action plan, I think its, it's main utility at this point will be to kind of act as that mapping uh, so that you can go from what's in the strategic plan um, and trace back to the institutional readiness, the specific items that are related and I see it working in both ways. When we do write up this, the report or the action plan, um, we'll be able to point to where in our strategic plan these, these issues are addressed and the need for, for initiatives is endorsed as part of our strategic plan, which should bolster attempts to make the action plan uh, come alive and be put into effect. And on the other side, people working from the strategic plan, if they're dealing with distance issues, they can go from the general, I mean, the strategic plan has very, you know, relatively broad uh, uh, goals and ideas, strategies. So they can go from one of these one or two sentence strategies and they can use the institutional readiness assessment document to go to, okay, in order to do this, here are the six places that are identified in the, in the readiness assessment, uh, uh, here are the six places that we can actually do these specific things to accomplish what we've said in the strategic plan we want to do. I think tying the two together actually almost forces you to think in terms not of these 75 items and how are you going to address each item in turn. You can't really do that at the strategic plan level. So it kind of necessitated uh, consolidating them and coming up with a, you know a more manageable number of top line you know issues that that bind together a whole set of those pretty much it worked really well i was really impressed with how with the outcomes like how well it actually did line up for us and um how well it did help us come up with our you know it's three strategic directions that we did and it, it the results landed where i felt in my God, I guess that they should be, you know, it kind of validated for me as the, the leader of the, you know, the, the dean of the uh, unit, that this is where I felt that the areas that we needed to work on. Um, so, but having the, it validated by everyone else that was surveyed was uh, really important and uh, really good process. I think it's very useful. I mean, I think it's, it really did get the campus community and people at fairly high levels in the campus community to be much more aware of distance learning and of the special needs as well as the opportunities presented by distance learning and especially online courses and online learning.